who will guard the raw material of unfettered ideas, if not you? Democracy is dialogue. Who will defend the core values of academia if you, the supposed soldiers of free thought and expression, lay down your arms and plead, don't shoot me? If you talk about race, it does not make you a racist. If you see distinctions between the genders, it does not make you sexist. If you think critically about a denomination, it just does not make you anti-religion. If you accept but don't celebrate homosexuality, it does not make you a homophobe. Don't let America's universities continue to serve as incubators for this rampant epidemic of new McCarthyism. That's what it is, new McCarthyism. But what can you do? How can anyone prevail against such pervasive social subjugation? Well, the answer's been here all along. I learned it 36 years ago on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., standing with Dr. Martin Luther King and 200,000 people. You simply disobey, peaceably, yes, respectfully, of course, nonviolently, absolutely. But when told how to think or what to say or how to behave, we don't. We disobey. Social protocol that stifles and stigmatizes personal freedom. I learned the awesome power of disobedience from Dr. King, who learned it from Gandhi and Thoreau and Jesus and every other great man who led those in the right against those with the might. Disobedience is in our DNA. We feel in a kinship with that disobedient spirit that tossed tea into Boston Harbor, that sent Thoreau to jail, that refused to sit in the back of the bus, that protested the war in Vietnam. In that same spirit, I'm asking you to disavow cultural correctness with massive disobedience of rogue authority, social directives, and onerous laws that weaken personal freedom. But be careful. It hurts. Disobedience demands that you put yourself at risk. Dr. King stood in lots of balconies. You must be willing to be humiliated, to endure the modern-day equivalent of the police dogs in Montgomery and the water cannons at Selma, you must be willing to experience discomfort. Now, I'm not complaining, but my own decades of social activism has left their mark on me. Let me tell you a story. A few years ago, I heard about a, a rapper named Ice-T who was selling a CD called Cop Killer, celebrating the ambushing and murdering of police officers. It was being marketed by none other than Time Warner, the biggest entertainment conglomerate in the country, in the world. Police across the country were outraged, and rightfully so. At least one of them had been murdered. But Time Warner was stonewalling because uh, the CD was a cash cow for them, and the media were tiptoeing around because the rapper was black. I heard Time Warner had a stockholders meeting scheduled in Beverly Hills. I owned some shares of Time Warner at the time, and so I decided to attend the meeting. What I did was against the advice of my family and my colleagues. I asked for the floor to a hushed room of a thousand average American stockholders. I simply read the full lyrics of Cop Killer, every vicious, vulgar, instructional word. I got my 12-gauge sawed off, I got my headlights turned off, I'm about to bust some shots off, I'm about to dust some cops off. It got worse. A lot worse. Now, I won't read the rest of it to you. But trust me, the room was a sea of shocked 
frozen, blanched faces. Time Warner executives squirmed in their chairs and stared at their shoes. They hated me for that. Then I delivered another volley of sick lyrics, brimming with racist filth, where Ice T fantasizes about sodomizing the two 12 year old nieces of Al and Tipper Gore. She pushed her butt against my. No. No. I won't do to you here what I did to them. Let's just say I left the room in a stunned silence. When I read the lyrics to the waiting press corps outside, one of them said, We can't print that, you know. I know, I said, but Time Warner is still selling it. Two months later, Time Warner terminated Ice T's contract. I'll never be offered another film by Warner Brothers or get a good review from Time Magazine, but disobedience means you have to be willing to act, not just talk. When a mother sues his elderly victim for defending herself, jam the switchboard at the district attorney's office. When your university is pressured your university is pressured to lower standards until 80% of the students graduate with honors, choke the halls of the Board of Regents. When an eight-year-old boy pecks a girl's cheek in the playground and then gets called into court for sexual harassment, march on that school and block its doorways. When someone you elected is seduced by political power and betrays you, Petition them, oust them, banish them. When Time Magazine's cover portrays millennium nuts as deranged, crazy Christians holding a cross, as it did last month, boycott their magazine and the products it advertises. So that this nation may long endure, I urge you to follow in the hallowed footsteps of the great disobediences of history, that freed exiles, founded religions, defeated tyrants, and yes, in the hands of an aroused rabble in arms and a few great men, by God's grace, do this country. If Dr. King were here, I think he would agree. I thank you.